March 2020, the coronavirus pandemic forced companies to shut down stores, offices, and production for public safety. Video content too. Creators sheltered in place, isolated from their crews, sets, and studios. The entertainment, advertising, and journalism industries faced a new kind of challenge. And like everyone else, we asked ourselves, how do we pull this off? The answer, we got creative. Is Lions Live? Vox Media's journalists, hosts, writers, designers, and editors turn their kitchens, phones, closets, and cars into makeshift sets and studios. There are decades worth of studies examining how <laughs> And one format proved to be the most resilient, the explainer. The fact is that you can explain anything with motion graphics, archive, and studio shoots. Since March, we've produced dozens of explainer videos, driving millions of views and counting. At first, uh, as a leader, as a creative leader, I thought, is this going to be chaos uh, from both a production standpoint, but also a creativity and inspiration standpoint? It took such a mindset shift to go from the typical client brief, which usually starts with dreaming up the impossible, to rather asking ourselves, what the hell can we do? which I guess is dreaming up the possible. Working from home for me has been a laptop and a monitor and trying to think of new formats. Uh, it's probably changed a lot more for Cleo, who has taken on a project where she actually has a set um, and a camera and lights set up in her apartment and has to be on camera every day from home. And this wasn't just changing to work from home. This was a whole new show. Okay, so in order to make a television show in my apartment, I've had to clear out some space. Um, I had to move my couch like right up against my television. Okay, so Answered is our new show on Quibi. And we made a show from pitch to launch in a month. We were actually rebuilding what Vox has already done for years, which is great explanatory journalism in text and in podcast and in short form video and on Netflix. And it's really just a new expression of Vox's mission to explain the world. When it comes to audio, Vox's daily news show, Today Explained, jumped into remote production, including making its very first episode for kids. Whoa, 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 let's try something a little different. We made a kids episode. We knew that kids were sitting at home with their parents and maybe had a lot of questions about the coronavirus, and we wanted to answer those too, and we wanted a sort of break format to do it. So um, today, explain producer reporter Noam Hassenfeld got together with another boxer who makes podcasts, Bird Pinkerton, and they sort of came up with this brilliant idea to take kids to the island of Explain, which is a fictional place where you know trees and caves help answer questions. The explainer format works for brands too. Fox's explainer studio has continued making videos for the likes of T-Mobile, Cutter Foundation, Amazon Studios, and other brands looking to create polished, unique content. It turns out explainers were made to be made remotely, built for distance, virtual production since, well, before virtual production was a thing. But why do they work so well? An explanation is when you spend more time focusing on the why and the how than on the who, what, where, when. Our process has probably had to change less than a lot of other video teams. And that's because we, from the start, emphasized written narration over interviews, and we emphasized motion graphics and archive over field shooting. So that set us up pretty well to respond to this pandemic. So you're saying pretty smooth. Oops, I'm so sorry, my mom is calling me. Uh, my dog just jumped into the frame the area. Hey Z, this is an example of working from home. Remote production. One man band. I'll do that one more time without the barking dog. Um, I'm doing an interview right now. She called back because I hung up. She's like, why would this happen? Vox took on one of our biggest challenges yet when we partnered with Netflix on a 30 minute explainer about the coronavirus itself. The show was produced remotely in under three weeks and was the number two most watched Netflix show in the US when it premiered. Meanwhile, over at Today Explained. I was on vacation when I got the news that our show would be going from a professional podcast made in a office in DuPont Circle in Washington, D.C. to a professional podcast made from um, closets and bedrooms and kitchens. Digital audio is growing at Vox, like 100% year-over-year growth. Sounds impressive. Speaking of impressive, this is Ken. Let's cut to some brands. So back in 2017, Vox founded The Explainer Studio, 
to provide consumers with a truer understanding of why brands do what they do and why it matters. Marketers can now apply all the tools and techniques that Vox had perfected to explain the trends, technologies, and forces that make their brands so fascinating. But earlier this year, when You Know What happened, many brands scrambled to keep their production on track. One of the first things that we did uh, when everything went down um, was to sort of take stock of all of the tools in our toolbox uh, and figure out what are the things that we're still gonna be able to do and we created a sort of remote and virtual guide to production, which we actually shared with our entire organization, as well as many of our agency and client partners. It, it became our production Bible of sorts. Um, and at the top of the list of those things were explainers. And the nice thing that we realized, you know, upon initially being like, is this a moment to panic, was that a lot of the work, like explainers that we were already doing, were perfectly set up to continue to create from home, from bathtubs, from closets, from attics, uh, from kitchens, from bedrooms. Uh, it just changed all of the locations, but we had the tools, we had the resources, and quite honestly, it gave us all a great sense of relief, excitement, uh, excitement around innovating, excitement around remixing some of those tools and seeing what would come out of it. And I think that's something that really drove our team to create the way we've been able to create, despite not being all in one office, despite not having access to our studios. One of the best examples of how the Explainer Studio has pivoted to remote production is this project we recently did for Amazon about their new show, Upload. It addressed this big question about what would you do if you could upload your brain after dying uh, so that you could live on infinitely in the realm of technology. So we wanted to talk not just about the show, but the ideas behind it. We interviewed experts. We talked to a neuroscientist who actually studies how feasible this is. We looked at research papers. We made motion graphics and animations about the results that uh, people are finding. Last but not least, we put it together with a remote writer, a remote producer, a remote editor, and even a remote director of photography in his basement. Vox's existing foundation for making explainer content with limited ingredients and straightforward production approaches has kept us serving up beautiful stuff for conscientious clients. But celebrating this format for just its creative practicalities is missing the larger, more human point. The truth is, as people, we are all desperate for truth, clarity, and understanding for this moment. And those issues that matter the most to us will impact culture at large. And so helping people understand will be the most valuable thing that we can offer right now. What I believe Explanation ultimately is going to do is create context for us to understand. All the things that made us comfortable no longer exist. And so as we rebuild, are we just gonna build back to what was normal, which wasn't working for a large part of society? Or are we going to interject new context and new understanding of that context so that we can actually build something better and something we should be moving forward with. And so I believe that that understanding builds that context and that context ultimately breeds empathy and hopefully that empathy will build a better civic society.